Hi, I'm Robin Williams, your architectural historian out in the streets. I'm here with Alderman Nick Palumbo, our District Court Alderman from Savannah City Council, and we are doing tactical architectural history. You may have heard of tactical urbanism with people like the Council for New Urbanism bring urban ideas to the streets. Well, we're doing that for architectural history. Alderman Palumbo reached out to the people and said, would you like your house, the architectural history of your house, um, evaluated and written on the sidewalk. So that's what we're doing here in our first, it's a sunny but chilly Thursday morning in, in April here in Savannah and we're out in the Parkside on 48th Street and we're going to be looking at this wonderful arts and crafts bungalow. Yeah, check this out. So what we're doing is we're identifying the form and the style and then neighbors will be able to come by as with COVID-19, we have a lot more neighbors that are out walking the streets. And as they're walking the streets, they'll be able to identify some of their favorite housing types and styles right here as they're walking the neighborhood. So this is an educational moment and a new feature as we've been out and about in our neighborhoods. So what I do is I'm the one who comes along and identifies the form and the style. And I'll also see if I have any research that might give us the date of the building. So what we have here is a bungalow a typical informal kind of form that was popular for working class and middle class housing and this is an early 20th century bungalow as you can tell by its low height it's basically one story and in terms of its style it is what we call craftsman an american craftsman style as you can see by those exaggerated brackets that the way the house has the framework that holds up the structure exaggerated and broad outside and the truss up in the gable there. If we come around to the side of the house, we can see the chimney over here is exaggerated and brought to the outside. So the craftsmanship of creating a chimney is brought and made prominent as opposed to houses where the chimney is built into the middle of the house. Chris and Mary Beckman have a question about their house and that is, are these porch posts original and we see that they're paired over at the right hand side and the dimensions are similar to the bracketing similar kind of handling and at the corner over on the left there there are three of them that are all close together so my suspicion is that at a minimum the pairs and set of three on the corner are design detail now the one around the door is a little different so it might be uh, a modification although the beam has a break roughly halfway so there must have been some kind of support so there the doorway is probably original but it looks like it was created in such a way that it there might have been a screen on this that this was a screened in front porch and the screening has been taken off over time you can tell from the windows here that uh, the Ripley glass I don't know if you can pick up if you move the camera a little you can see the Ripley glass so at least some of the windows have their original one over one sash windows, which by the early 20th century glass making got to a point where the panes of glass could get bigger. So 19th century houses typically had a lot of small panes uh, as a feature, but this is typical early 20th century. And we just looked up, I've got a list of houses from some old National Register nomination data, and this house was built in 1920. So here we are in front of 1211 East 48th Street, carrying on with our tactical architectural history. And I'm here with Alderman Palumbo, who's the chalk man in this exercise. And I am also here with John Bennett, who has um, brainstormed this idea. We owe the credit to him. And he's also our sort of general manager in this operation. <laughs> We're here at the house of Jeff Eason and his little, is that a chihuahua? Tiny dogs, he has tiny dogs. And it's perfect because he has a smallish house, typical of Parkside. It is a one-story bungalow. And this one's really interesting because it's a craftsman bungalow that is, uh, and, and Nick's job here, what we should put every good alderman to work with a piece of chalk in hand. And so he writes down whatever I say. He believes it un unquestioningly. <laughs> And so uh, this is a bungalow, it's one story tall. We can see it's a craftsman bungalow. In this case, you can see at the base of the roof are these rafters coming out. And those are called rafter tails. 
and the rafter tails are also on the underside of the porch. The window surrounds are more typical classical uh, window frames. And in fact, it's possible that this house combined, you know, craftsmanship of the carpenter and the builder, but there's some parts that are a little bit surprising. Most notably, the porch columns are these neoclassical uh, Roman Doric, uh, but very, very skinny Roman Doric columns. Purpose, possibly that these were uh, bought off the shelf, as it were, from a, a vendor, uh, as opposed to the craftsmanship being made on site. We have a lovely screen door on this house. What's interesting also, it appears that on the left, the, uh, on the east side of the house, we have an addition. And you can tell that by the rafter tails, although there was an attempt to make it compatible, but the rafter tails here are of a different, they're cut differently and the pitch of the roof is different. Telltale signs that this, telltale signs that this was done at a later date. Although it was really done well, the siding and the edging match really well. Jeff has done research. He, has, he and his wife have done research on the house. He informs me the house was built in 1927. So that's right in the thick of when many of the houses in Parkside were made. But they went to the Georgia room at the a Bull Street Library local history room and they use records such as city directories which are a great resource because they can show an address and a person's name and it's a great way easy for anyone to do once the library reopens is to go to a place like a Bull Street Library or in any city and look for a city directory and once you see an entry with a, a resident's name it's a clue that that's when the building or whatever buildings at that address starts to be occupied. It's not a guarantee that's when the house is built or any building, but it is a great clue. So come back to see what houses we visit for tactical architectural history next time.